During the pandemic, 45% of people in the UK visited green spaces such as parks to help them cope. Despite this collective use, we remain responsible for environmental degradation that can damage mental health in diverse and unexpected ways. Effects on mental health may be immediate, such as the grief or post-traumatic stress felt after extreme weather events. They can also be longer term. Children are up to four times more likely to suffer from depression at age 18 if they are exposed to polluted air at age 12. Noise pollution has also been linked to insomnia, cognitive impairment and exacerbation of existing psychiatric problems. A mental state can be harmed indirectly through the physical health problems, economic instability or damage to supportive communities that are all associated with the changing climate. Although not all of us experience imminent danger from climate change, one thing that can pervade is the sense of anxiety about our shared future in the face of a global, existential environmental threat, which has been termed eco-anxiety. Nature can provide a solution to these issues. It has been found to help with anxiety, depression, and seasonal affective disorder. Green spaces promote cognitive development and self-control in children, and better working memory, cognitive flexibility, and attention control in adults. Nature might even make us nicer, with studies finding increased cooperation, consideration, and generosity following school trips into nature versus a museum. These benefits are seen in both green and blue spaces, with more biodiverse and remote locations generally yielding better results. Urban greenery, gardening, and just a sense of connection with nature can help too. Increased emphasis on nature in urban planning can lead to significant savings in public care budgets, especially when tailored to neighborhoods with limited access to green spaces. These tend to be poorer and more racially diverse, with just 39% of people from ethnic minority backgrounds living within five minutes walk of a green space. This figure is 46% for those with a household income of under £15,000, whilst the British average is 57%. Further issues include providing access to people with disabilities and making sure that underrepresented groups feel safe from harassment or harm in these spaces. Studies suggest that higher levels of green space exposure during childhood significantly reduces the risk of developing mental illnesses. Therefore, schemes to refurbish parks in areas of the country with the lowest access to green space should not only be seen as a gain for nature, but for mental health too.